In December 1934, Japan began construction of the first of the two ships of the 11,215-ton Tone class. Originally, these were slated to be continuations of the Mogami class. In fact, they also were named after rivers, but then came the incidents of the mid-30s and the near disaster that was Mogami's trials. So, when construction had only barely begun, they were stopped and both were redesigned. At about the same time, the Navy was adopting a doctrine of using shipborne float planes to scout for the carriers, who could then in turn dedicate all of their aircraft for the strike roll. The result of all this was that these two came out as what I would call carrier bodyguards. That is to say, they weren't meant to operate shooting it out with the enemy, but rather to escort the carriers. Operating as scouts, and if an enemy got close, to protect them from surface or air attack. As a result of this new role and the lessons learned, they came out pretty different. While some welding was used in Tone, it was totally abandoned in Chikuma. Both used only eight boilers, as in the second pair of Mogamis. The practice of using the hull as armor was dropped, and side armor was moved inside of the ship's skin rather than being it. While they retained the aircraft deck, the stern, which was one level lower, was given over totally to storing float planes and using rails to move them around. They had no hangar. Main armament was originally meant to be triple 155 millimeter guns, but with the expiration of the treaty, while they were under construction and there being no intention to re-sign, they were finished with the now standard heavy cruiser armament of twin 203 millimeter 50 caliber guns. These were moved to the bow, where they didn't interfere with aircraft operations aft. The number of turrets was reduced from previous ships to save weight. Tone was started December 1, 1934 and completed November 20, 1938. Chikuma was started October 1, 1935 and completed May 20, 1939. Main armament was eight 203 millimeter 50 caliber guns in four twin turrets, all forward of the superstructure with turret one facing forward, turret two raised, and turret three and four facing aft. Secondary armament was eight five inch 40 caliber dual purpose guns in four twin shielded mounts, two on each side midship. Torpedo armament was 12 tubes in four triple 24 inch mounts for the type 93 long lance. Two mounts on each side on the main deck under cutouts in the superstructure below the catapult deck. Propulsion was provided by eight boilers venting to two funnels that trunked together into one. These provided steam to four turbines that generated 152,000 horsepower. Each drove one of the ship's four propellers for a top speed of 35 knots. They used one rudder. Armor was revised from the previous Mogamis. The side armor was 100 millimeters thick aside engineering, increasing to 125 millimeters aside the main gun magazines. This was topped off by the armored deck above engineering and the magazines, which was 30 millimeters thick near the center, increasing to 60 millimeters as it sloped downward to meet the top of the side armor. The upper deck had 19 millimeters of armor. Aircraft was theoretically eight, but usually only five were carried. These could be launched from one of two catapults on the upper forward catapult deck. Modifications were relatively few. While undergoing repairs in December of 1942, Chikuma was fitted with Type 21 radar. Tone following suit in late February of 1943. After the Battle of the Philippine Sea, Tone was fitted with two Type 22 and a Type 13 radar. In mid-November of 1944, Tone's Type 21 radar was replaced with another Type 22. More medium and light anti-aircraft was of course added throughout the war, eventually covering Tone's lower flight deck. Tone and Chikuma escorted the carriers, get used to hearing that, when they launched the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Later that month, they escorted Soryu and Hiryu as they supported the second invasion of Wake. By the end of the month, they were back in Japan. In late January of 1942, they escorted the carriers as they covered the invasion of Rabul and the rest of the northern Solomons. In mid-February, they escorted the carriers as they raided the Australian port of Darwin. 
In late February and early March, they escorted the carriers as they cruised south of Java to sink any ships trying to escape to Australia during and after the Battle of the Java Sea. The high point here for them was on the afternoon of March 1st when they were detached with Hiei and Kirishima to sink the old American destroyer Edsel. Embarrassingly, they fired at the old destroyer for almost two and a half hours without scoring any real hits before she was mortally wounded by carrier aircraft and finally finished off by Chikuma. In early April, they escorted the carriers as they raided Sri Lanka, sank the British carrier Hermes, and the cruisers Cornwall and Dorsetshire. Afterward, they returned with the carriers to Japan. In early June, they escorted the carriers at the Battle of Midway and were powerless to save them. Afterward, they headed north to try to intercept any American force trying to reinforce the Aleutians, but when nothing happened, they returned to Japan. In late August, they sailed with the carriers from Japan and escorted them at the Battle of the Eastern Solomons. In late October, they escorted the carriers at the Battle of Santa Cruz. During the battle, Chikuma was hit by three bombs. Jettisoning her torpedoes saved her from blowing herself up, but she suffered damage to her engine rooms that cut her speed in half and blew holes in her side, causing her to take on a list. After emergency repairs at Truck, she returned to Japan for full repairs that lasted until February of 1943. Meanwhile, during the mid-November naval battles of Guadalcanal, Tone escorted the carrier Junio well north of the action, so took no part in either battle or the bombardment between the two. In mid-February of 1943, Tone returned to Japan for a refit. In late March, both returned to Truk. In mid-May, they sailed north to join the force meant to reinforce the Aleutian island of Atu, but when the island fell before they could get there, the mission became superfluous, so they returned to Japan. In mid-July, they escorted the carriers back to Truk, then covered convoys from Truk to Rabul and around the northern Solomons. In September and October, they escorted the carriers as they tried to intercept American carriers that launched training raids on First Wake in the Gilberts, then on the Marshalls. Both times, they were too late, so returned to Truk. At the end of October, Tone returned to Japan for a refit that lasted until mid-December. Chikuma, meanwhile, stayed at Truk, and following the Battle of Empress Augusta Bay, was part of the cruiser force that sailed to Rabul to take uh, a second attempt at attacking the American beachhead on Bougainville. She was at Rabul on November 5th when American carrier planes raided the harbor but didn't suffer any real damage in the raid. Later in the month, she was part of the force that transferred to the Marshalls when the U.S. invaded the Gilberts but was back at Truk by the end of the month. In mid-December, she returned to Japan for a refit. With Tone's refit completed, she escorted a convoy from Japan to Truk, arriving at the end of, November, of December 1943. At the start of February 1944, along with most other warships, Tone departed Truk and sailed first to Palau, then on to Singapore, arriving near the end of the month. At the same time, Chikuma completed a refit at the start of February and ferried supplies from Japan to Singapore, where she was reunited with her sister. For the first half of March, they took part in the raids into the Indian Ocean, then returned to Singapore. In June, they escorted the carriers to the Battle of the Philippine Sea. Neither was damaged, though, and they returned with the fleet to Japan afterward, arriving near the end of the month. Following refit at the start of July, along with the rest of the surface fleet, they ferried reinforcements first to Okinawa, then to the Philippines, then continued on to Singapore, arriving in the middle of the month. In late October, they sailed as part of center force to the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Both escaped any real damage at the Palawan Pass and in the Cebuan Sea, so took part in the Wild Battle of Samar. Tone again escaped any real damage there, not so for Chikuma. At about 9 a.m., she was hit well aft by an aircraft torpedo that blew off her stern, wrecked her port propellers, and destroyed her rudder. Slowing to 8 knots, down by the stern and un unnavigable, at about 11 a.m., she was hit port midship by two more aircraft torpedoes that flooded her engine's rooms, leaving her dead in the water, without power, and listing to port. Three hours later, at 2.15 p.m., she was hit by three more aircraft torpedoes port side amidship. That was enough. The crew abandoned ship and she was scuttled, rolling over to port and sinking stern first. After the battle, 
Tone escaped damage in the Tablas Strait and returned with what was left of the surface fleet to Singapore. In mid-November, she escorted the carrier Junio back to Japan for repairs. While repairs were done by February of 1945, the lack of fuel or air cover meant she was essentially reduced to a floating anti-aircraft pl platform and training ship at Kure. On July 24, 1945, American carrier aircraft raided the harbor. Three bombs and several near misses hit her that knocked out turret four, most of the boilers, most of her engines, and cracked her hull resulting in massive flooding. There was very little effort made to save her, and in the afternoon of that same day, she settled into the mud, mostly on an even keel. Post-war, her hulk was raised and scrapped.